Hola community, it's Pablo Vázquez with another episode of Lender Today. This episode, I, I thought we wouldn't have a lot of uh, things to talk about because we've been streaming every day. Plus, uh, in this channel, we have uploaded uh, tutorials from like uh, scripting in the Render Developers channel. There is even a back fix. How to, how, like, the, it was a full recording of a back fixing ever. The first one ever in YouTube history, I would say. But we're gonna talk about this in a bit, but also there is tutorials on the uh, Settlers project and how to do the modeling blocking, for example, and the design. And there was even a live stream that we did yesterday, but also we talked with this week, we talked with Ian Uber and with uh, Captain Disillusion. It was quite a week. So to close it, I have my buddy as usual. We have the live Felinto. Hey, Pablo. Thank Again, you. it's always nice to be here. Hello everyone. Thank you for dropping by short notice. I was gonna do it all by myself. I was like, I've been done this before. I won't, no, I'm not gonna feel alone. And uh, that was awesome. It's like, no, no, I can join. Okay, so thank you. I'm not, but I'm not alone because we're doing this live. We are live here on, on YouTube. There is a chat, there's people, 133 people watching live. Leave your questions, please, on blender.today. Their link, it should be... Uh, the link is on Blender today, actually. They didn't put this one, they didn't manage to get it on the description. But there is already some questions that we're gonna answer more towards the end of the show. Again, this time of the of, of Blender development is a, it's a strange one, because it's Beacon 2 slash 3. We are getting close to Beacon 3 next week, right? Next, next Wednesday. Wednesday. What does it mean, Beacon 3? means... It means we're way over decided on what makes and what doesn't make into the upcoming Blender 2.83. And then we only focus on, well, focus on only polishing and bug fixing. But that also means master is once again open for new features. Yes, like that every <laughs> single one excited. Yeah. That is the most exciting part. No, no, I mean, it's also exciting that we are getting closer to releasing 2.83. But for people watching this show, probably they're a bit more excited about the master being open. However, 2.83 is the first LTS release. So that means it should oh, be rock that means If things go, you know, we are still deciding, settling on how to handle the whole LTS. But if things go according to the planning, it means we're going to keep maintaining it for two years. Oh. Porting back. Uh, Critical fixes and critical fixes, crashes, yeah. crash reports, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, especially um, thinking about hardware, because if you have, if you have this blender that's working so well, and then two years from now there's a new graphic card with you know driver. Yeah. How can we make? How can we still we use the, that blender with something that wasn't supported at the time? So this is a classic example, but it goes also for uh, critical bug fixes, of course. So. And it's probably gonna be the one that many studios stick with for a while. So hopefully, for yeah, we already had people from Ubisoft giving feedback. So if you go to the on the developer code blog, yes, when when Tom wrote about the LTS proposal, yes. one of the comments is from the someone from the Ubisoft team say that they were just about having to decide whether to have new features or to get the latest fixes. And they're like in the same week, just struggling with these and then bingo. Really? Ah, oh, yeah, I just reading here. Amazing. Perfect timing for announcing. We had a discussion last week at Ubisoft about sticking to a specific version versus updating every three months. This is very nice. Felt more safe to choose a version for a project and stick with it. So yeah, in that case, Ubisoft will be sticking with Blender SDS. Isn't that crazy? That's super nice. And of course, this is an open invitation for, you know, partners to see how we can support this idea together but we are bound to make sure the first one is uh, and goes all the way to the end yeah then we think we can do it we can probably even manage with almost the, the existing team it'd be nice to hire new people for that but but it should be dual i think uh, like critical fixes they happen very rarely i think um it, 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 a good comparison is the cor we call correct re releases 2.82a. 2.a b. With uh, a small, um, <laughs> like, uh, public service announcement, 
that when you when you say when you write 2.8 when you talk about the alpha write it 2.83 alpha not the minus the little a i saw it some people on the forums and in the chat even on blender chat talking oh in a comment on youtube also when we announced i made a video about 2.82 a and somebody says what do you mean i'm already in 2.83 a it's like no you that sure? is <laughs> alpha i mean it's not confusing it's not your fault you know it's just that was a quote from tears of steel not your fault you know but um and just to be clear because people seem to be get confused about that is ubisoft um movie not movie the department of ubisoft so yeah. it's ubisoft paris that's mostly responsible for i think tv series right uh yeah so, so assassin's creed won't be made in blender yet <laughs> how, how would you know maybe they can tell <laughs> we can always wish uh <laughs> or like uh wishful thinking all right, so there are actually a few things that have been added this week and mainly fixes. There is all kinds of fixes, cleaning up also the code, but uh, there is a few new little things that I found pretty interesting. So the switch, the switch into new feature mode. The first one that is very interesting that is gonna, if probably the most exciting of the week, one of the most exciting is that there is a two, um, nodes that have a new roughness option. This is for shading. So when you are um, shading um, with, the, for example, when you send the noise modifier or the wave modifier, a modifier, sorry, notes. No, 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 it's notes, no, shading notes. Shading notes, sorry. I, I don't know why I was just thinking. I was reading something else. Wave noise nodes, both of them. They have a new option that is called roughness, and by default is uh, 0 0.5, which is the value that uh, the value that is gonna make it just look as it was before. So this new setting shouldn't affect the way um, your previous um, notes were looking. I really like the presentation of the. It's very well the done. So well done. And the developer, we talked about him before here, right? Yeah, Bartos Manieski. Thank yeah. you very much for making the patch, for making the nice demos. I'm going to use this on the recap. Yeah, and it's on, again, it's uh, someone who is using Blender for their own games. So they have games on Nintendo Switch and probably other platforms, I don't know. And they're using Blender and then expanding Blender, I guess, for their own needs. So super and nice. Sharing, sharing with the world. Uh, like Tangent, for example, also uh, improve Blender and then share the results with the world. That's amazing. So this uh, option is called it the roughness and roughness, depending on which node you're in. Um, he even mentions that actually this option is is called sometimes persistent, but most DG software name it roughness. Um, but yeah, the results you can get are, are great and just add so much more detail with uh, the same nodes. So and yay for less nodes. It's a really good timing because I don't know if you see if you've seen, but uh, Ian U H Hubert, yes, he posted a new one minute tutorial. Yeah, using parametric textures, using the mus mus growth, and uh, it's, it's a diff I don't know if how it relates to this node, but it's kind of it's really nice to see parametric Marvel. textures being more used. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, he mentioned in the uh, he was here on the live on Tuesday, and we actually he mentioned like yeah, just add a mask grave to anything to the noise, and he mentioned this but like chatting, and now he just made a tutorial about it, so super super awesome. You can find uh, the video here on uh, Ian Yours YouTube channel, which you are probably subscribed already. If you're not, you're missing out. The um. Other improvement, this is a very nice improvement, then other uh, new thing that you're going to find in Blender. If you start it from scratch, like if you don't have any config, it's going to show you the splash screen with the settings. In these settings, you're going to find a new one for setting the language. For the same the same way you can change the default theme or the, um, like the shortcuts that you're using, or if you use left click select, right click select, now there is an, a setting for the language. Advice, <laughs> advice. I always advise my fellow Spanish-speaking um, users. I don't know, I, I speak Spanish, so I, I, I have a, this life in Spanish, and I always say, please do not, as an advice, do not use Blender UI, the interface, completely in Spanish. Only use some bits. Something I really like about the Blender, uh, the way Blender translations work, is that you can choose what to translate. You don't have to choose the whole, the whole um, 
UI. So for example, if I choose Spanish here, it's gonna change everything, but I can um, change the button. I can disable the button that says interface, or uh, in this case, it will be like UI interface. And then I keep everything in English. So I still can follow every tutorial out there. But if I mouse over, I get the very nice, <clears throat> very nice. So I'm growing up. Spanish uh, tooltips. <laughs> Spanish tooltips is that you know to speak so Latino, you have to clear your throat. So this is a very. I think is a good uh, advice. How is this, the Brazilian Portuguese one? Is it also same? Uh, and it's, it used to be quite well maintained. I don't know uh, nowadays. Not how, anymore. <laughs> what the percentage? Uh, I'm looking at the. I can't find a, a single uh, setting in Portuguese. So but try to look for the old ones, like uh, yeah, save as file. The, you can you can see when you set it when you select a different uh, ah the the old ones like save as file. Um, yeah, salvo archivo blender actual, <laughs> blendy actual. That's my Portuguese. The um, the nice thing about this is that you can choose you can see which ones are complete or like almost complete because new strings are added all the time so not everything is going to be completely um full at the moment of the release but uh you can find the in the different columns you can say you can find the complete in progress brazilian is in there and then the starting ones um so yeah bf sorry for the official releases we don't you don't release every one of them, right? I think it's no. only for the bug builds. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. So you can build the longer day. So if you download from the uh, billboard, you're gonna see different ones. The same with the some some themes that you're gonna see there, but not in the official release, and so on and so forth. So, um, nice little addition. And then I I have a list of things that have like they're random. They're not even <laughs> in one section. <laughs> This case, collections. This is a very nice addition by another developer I haven't seen that often, uh, Stephen D. Dooner. Um, this is, ah, so that, that's a subscriber, Simon here, Sulet. He um, made a fix that makes it so when you an exclude child collection, no, when, when you exclude a collection, the child collections are gonna keep their status. Have you checked this one? I'm sending you some nice images from the motion blur, sorry. Oh, uh, I did. I think I've click if you click on the patch. Yes, I think I was I was poked there. I don't think I actually read it. D seventy sixteen. Yes. So basically, it means that because before you would lose the like 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 if you unclick. Yeah, this is what happens now, which or happened uh, before. Yeah, that's the one. The least astonishment. I remember the name was so different from the patch that I kind of. <laughs> very annoying because then you will lose the the state of each one of the collections not anymore you click click and it's saved isn't that yeah I life -changing. originally because in the initial initial plan once we were to exclude that collection it would be entirely removed from depth graph from from the memory let's put it this way yeah so to keep the settings then wasn't from the day one wasn't planned but then people started to to, to complain about it's not the first time I think we do something like this. But it's nice, it's nice that the system is is alive, like still. I know. You worked on it. Moments. And uh, you should share something with uh, about motion blur. I, let, let's leave it for, uh, let's hype it. Uh, in a bit, you're gonna see some mind blowing motion blur. It's that the render engine that I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's so, not. It's not. It's, it's it's like a technical <laughs> image demo from 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 Klima. Yes. Okay. Let Let's leave it out there. Let's continue uh, <laughs> with the new things. So the um, feature that I was actually talking about was the collections. Then after that, there is a bunch of fixes that involve, for example, on Windows uh, when you use Windows Ink now uh, support for high resolution tablets, tablet pen events. Um, so sometimes there could be like some artifact if you move the pen really fast that should be sold so It's part of actually of a um, of a fix. This was yeah. also done by Nicolas Richel. So yeah, this also introduced a huge problem for a Few people, but a lot of people were just launching blender and this whole screen was white. Oh So which me in in the end it was basically I think it was stuck in a loop Trying to find the the tablet in the computer. Yeah. So something that's a very and it's very complicated because 
Uh, we couldn't find anyone in the core team that would have this. <laughs> Sergey had it to some extent. His blender would take very long to, to launch for the first time. Oh. But to actually get the whole freeze in the widescreen, but and then uh, Lazy Dodo, so Ray, for his last name. Ray, he, he's the, the window right. plat Windows platform maintainer. He actually managed to, to poke some people, and Nicholas is one of them. And I think this is, this is a red fix, I believe. So that's the thing, it's, yeah. it's a very delicate, fragile area. So you're improving a lot of this for doing tabs, but at the same time, you're like stepping in. In other areas. Thin eyes. Yes. So if you had issues with the Windows Pen, uh, Stylus supports Windows Ink and Win WinTab, it should uh, be better. So please test it, otherwise report a bug. Then another thing that was fixed is for people using uh, Intel 10th generation graphics card on Windows, there was a slowdown recently, introduced recently. This should fix it by uh, Jeroen, he fixed it yesterday. Yeah, he was working with the Intel 10th generation, which again, Intel is one of our sponsors, top develop funders, yeah. develop development funding. So that we have this close collaboration where they send us some of the latest hardware so we can make sure you now it's supported. And yeah, it's pretty nice that that's actually working. That's super nice. That's a completely also different kind of support, you know, not only financially, but also it's like, hey, this is, this is a hardware, test it, make it awesome. So, all right, I think I covered most of it. There is some uh, uh, fixes in um, armatures, for example. Now you can use when you use symmetries to make the same uh, to make one half of the armature the same as the other. The was there were some issues with constraints. Not anymore. That should be solved um, by no. uh, Sebastian Paderborg. We also had a problem uh, that was uh, fixed this week with the child off constraints. So oh, the regression yes. compared to the two point eighty two. So it's something that's even uh, rolled back because basically a lot of the implementation for constraints, it was, I mean, it, it, it works in some way, but it shouldn't work in that way. It should look like <laughs> from the code perspective, whatever. And the animation team was starting to try to clean this out and say, okay, this is how it was supposed to work from, from the beginning. But you know, everyone that had a file that was already using this obscure feature would just crash. Was broken. Or behave in a different way. Yeah. So. So that has and, we, and we decided, you know what, since we have this whole idea of the LTS, we have this whole idea of have the Blender 2.90, leave those big breakages to 2.90. Yes. That's, so that's the, so we roll back these and things are just as before. What a great segue, because we can talk, I finished with what is Blender, new in Blender today, but since we have a little bit of time, maybe we can talk about, we can enter the section, what I called Blender tomorrow. Blender tomorrow. Oh, it's uh, <laughs> it's like because you know at this this weird time. No, not uh, the the pandemia, but <laughs> the uh, time between a release and the upcoming release, Blender 2.9. So in 2.9 T, the next release after 2.83, there are a few things that have been already been worked on. Um, some of them involve, for example. Grease Pencil. The Grease Pencil team is already making um, changes and improving the tools for tracing. So uh, they... Sorry? It's just so amazing. It's just amazing. So last week they worked on a uh, something called Bake Animation to um, make mesh animation to to uh, Grease Pencil, which you can find actually on the Blender Developers YouTube channel. Um, where you basically um, yeah, just select a mesh you run a button and it will make a grease pencil object. So the wireframe is going to become strokes and the material is going to become fields. So very interesting. On top of that, which is, you can test it if you compile the grease pencil object branch, they also are working on this. And this demo was sent by the developer himself. So basically, you have an image. You run a command, you run a little option in your operator, and you can we can trace the bitmap, the image to Grease Pencil. So the same way you would do it, I don't know, in Inkscape or Illustrator or other softwares where you can take an image and make vectors. Now you can also make Grease Pencil objects. This is a completely different way of working. Super nice. And using a it like a, a in the 
third party library for that? Third party. Oh, Pop Tracer, I think. Yes. What was Antonio my 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 come to my rescue here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's uh it's completely different and, and the way it works right now is that you maybe you would like to make it work with Bessia cores uh, all in Grace Pencil, but for in the future. So yeah. That is uh pretty pretty exciting because you can access directly yes potrace uh, antonio you are in the chat thank you thank you for everything for the for the development and for actually making the demo here this is real time this video by the way it's a one-on-one -on -one, so this is, is really fast to to execute uh we should we should apply to a, a gif may import the gif animated with the one frame at a time I, I, the thing is, I, I, this is so useful. I wonder what the other thing is, is, is going to be used for, though. Well, it, it's... I don't know. The other, the bake animation, it kind of looks like LAN PR, in a way. Um, like a possible LAN PR. Like a different approach to the same, you know, to converting lines from uh, mesh. So if it could happen, like, on every frame, like a modifier, maybe. Yeah. Uh, that would be pretty crazy. So that is for Blender tomorrow. This is the, a feature that is coming up for Blender 2.9. Another thing that is Blender coming for Blender 2.9 is a change in the Blender user interface that is gonna, that it, it sounds like it came a little bit late to the party. Um, it's not even in officially added in Blender yet. It's gonna be a part of uh, uh, Blender 2.9. So it was like way later. Maybe it can be added in a couple of weeks to Blender Master, but if you use the official release, you're not going to find it. So what is that? For example, let's say you have a... Um, I'm going to make it uh, extra complicated here. But for example, I have a monkey here. Oh, yeah. So how do you usually do stuff? So if I want to have a nice subdivided monkey, that's pretty nice. So what do you do afterwards if you're just modeling half of it? Then, okay, you maybe add a... Uh, this looks weird. Let's, let me add a mirror modifier. So, okay mirror modifier oh no I have a crease in the middle because first I added the subsurf and then I added the mirror so I'm gonna reorder my modifiers <laughs> how can I reorder there is no arrow up arrow down there is <laughs> ladies and gentlemen here give it up for drag and drop modifiers so you basically this is what Hans is doing right Yes, Hans Goody and William Reinisch are redesigning the whole um, uh, the whole modifier list thing. Even though we are <laughs> gonna get uh, you know you, like modifier nodes eventually at some point in Blender, this is a very very <laughs> very weighted. Like I look at the it's chat, people are anything. dropping their jaw. They are getting crazy. No way, it can't be going nuts. This feature, if you go to right click select.com is the top most uh, feature wanted feature ever drag and drop modifier stack almost 430 uh, <laughs> it's this is gonna break the internet like forget Eevee you know? Eevee that's like yeah yeah but you know sex is great but have you ever drag and drop a modifier what's <laughs> wrong with just clicking Anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, it's really great. Uh, I mean, I think we still need some options here. This is working progress, by the way, people. Um, this apply huge apply button maybe should become like its own little option somewhere else where you can just like uh, maybe click on uh, like drop down menu maybe or also uh, what if you want to delete all of the modifiers or apply all of the modifiers? You still need a place where to execute many operations at once. Um, but um, uh, but still great great thing great coming right uh, option. because or sorry i'm looking for the regular oh no, the whole thing compared to the regular panels to cool. the regular panels yeah and i get the same it's probably going to work for object constraints as well of course yes yep and also i don't know if you people notice here but the way uh, this should be applied it uh, should be applied to everything but also there is the uh the way the um, um the checkboxes look it's also being worked on by Julian Isel and he is uh, making great great um, progress with that so basically basically what you get is a new way of showing this um, this I show here the picture in big um, 
the checkbox X. So you actually have the like the headline of that zone, that area, and then you have all the checkboxes here, which is different how you use how it looks in regular Blender. And this this issue has been there forever since we since the the, the change in the way the checkboxes look like like the whole interface looks. For example, this thing that you have the text, and all the way to the corner you have the button for denoising, for example, or anything that uses a checkbox. Now the checkbox item will be first and then the text. This is a uh, fairly big, uh, this is maybe not big in, in like code wise, but in the interface. So these will be saved together with the modifiers for um, Blender 2.9, 9, 90. You've never seen that before. No, no, I'm thinking, uh, yeah, no, I haven't. And I'm thinking about the original 2.80 UI changes proposed by William. I want to see how this, because I'm curious if this is a design that was planned from the beginning. Yeah. Or just something that... Uh... Um, no, this is something that showed up while working on the modifiers UI um, branch. So, for example, in the left, you can see that there is uh, how it used to be. So it's weird aligned. You have the text on one side, um, like all the way and the all the way to the end you have the checkbox now this is a better line i think it looks much better more organized uh, it requires to go and change every part of the blender user interface to use a new layout but i think it looks better um, but isn't it a bit strange you don't have text on the left and on the right side of where you're supposed to click i'm not sure because it like it's better than how it used to be with the bind two, for example then semicolon or colon and then like you have the one text, especially if you make the window long, you have one text very on the left and then the, the checkbox all the way to the right. I think this having them together is kind of better to um, for that visibility. Makes, yeah. And no, my if, concern is that it probably make it really hard to make the small. The whole idea of the, idea of the vertical design of, for the layout is that you're supposed to have very compact panels, right? And then yes. just rely on them growing vertically. And if you have text on both sides, you're never going to be able to, to compress it very much. Um, I don't. I don't know. If you look at the example here, you can see that actually, in the armature modifier, the bind to it, it it manages like if you squeeze this window down, it would be sh uh, it would occupy pretty much the same space, and it would actually it work. No. Yeah, because also you are in some cases you are removing like the use vertex groups, use bone envelopes, because you are already since the text is on the side, like the action is on the side of the verb, then it kind of makes it more. Uh, Easy to understand. I don't know. We, we need to see this in uh, in action. I think, like, uh, we need to see it how how it looks and then try it. You know what else is exciting? Whatever link you sent me, it's uh, super. <laughs> what what is it? You need to explain it because you suddenly sent me this crazy color artwork, developer artwork, and I'm kind of freaking out. I'm, um, I, I even send you like two different images, right? Yeah, yeah, the first one and the... I don't even know what's the difference between... Well, so basically, Clem has been working on motion blur. Uh, you're thinking about... Motion blurring like, uh, what? Wait, which, uh, again, oh. uh, can you go in full screen and scream it? Okay, so... If he always had some kind of camera motion blur... Yes. Right? But never really managed to have object motion blur. Okay. And... And then Clement was looking for, basically, if you take the Coffee Run, the project that the Blender Animation Studio is doing, Yes. the one reason they're using Cycles for, or the main one, is motion blur. The other is because of AOV, I think. Okay. So and it's like, why, so why can't EV do, uh, do that? So he's been working on that for, it was supposed to be like a relaxing project, if I remember correctly. Like in between, the ref he was doing like a lot of refactors and techno depth. And it's, it's keep like doing more and more of this Escalating. motion blur. So he was trying his own method for that, and he had to compromise a little bit to, to find a, a fallback option, which is what you see there. The he has this working for curves and mesh objects. So and you're, there's you're, one thing he was you're basically saying later. that motion blur in Eevee is being worked on as this that as we talk. Still yes, definitely. And it's we there. have an announcement yes, to avoid. <laughs> We're done. A lot of hype. The project wasn't going to be finished, but yes. 
yeah, it's good. So okay, not get excited too excited, but it's being worked on and um, by the by the guy that made Eevee, so it kind of fits in good hands. It's not like some kind of patch isolated, but uh this is I, I think it's getting there. Today, yeah, where is the mic drop? That we need to drop the mic. I, I can't drop the mic. It's actually attached to this thing. Uh, but why they're breaking uh, today? I thought like we wouldn't have anything to talk about. And then we have drag and drop modifier. Then we have uh, motion blur in Eevee. Of course, we are talking in the future, so it's more blender every day it's tomorrow than every day slash today. So with that being said. I think we are we are good to go with the questions. But before that, before the, all this noise and all this amazing announcement, uh, on Wednesday we actually met together here on live stream to talk about to dive into the Blender code. One of the it went actually really well the uh, like reception. People were super yeah, like yeah during the live stream and even afterwards like the comments comments so people excited and. Uh, it's new, right? We haven't done, and it hasn't been done actually. And some people were suggesting that okay, maybe it's, it's a bit too overwhelming to go through the whole Blender code. Maybe it's easier to fix a bug. Turns out it's not so easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I know a guy, a boy, that made a video about it. So yeah, because that's the thing, right? We had the live stream on Wednesday, and then on Thursday, because of Bcon three. I was going over the reports to try to find high priority bugs that I uh, could, you know, dispatch to the team or maybe handling myself. And then I found one that's been there for quite some time. It's about stereoscopic and video sequence editor, which is an area I'm familiar with. Stereo and video sequencer. And so too, I remember that people say, yeah, why, why don't you guys do a live bug fixing? Why? Why? I know why, but I wanted to prove the point. <laughs> And so not, let me try to report it. What is it's the reason? Cool. <laughs> because it's not something you do super fast. And he's like, ah, oh, yeah, let's fix that. If you do it as a, like already having the fix and just explain the fix, you can do it fast, of course. But the real bug fixing might take, you have no idea before you start, right? So it's a... Yes, so this, this is how it started. And this video, you can find it on the Blender Developers YouTube channel because it's a bit more, I think it, it would fit here in this channel, but since the content here is a bit more curated and more edited and stuff, um, the hardcore Blender developer uh, people uh, interested in that gonna find this video that is three and a half hour long. Of course, it's not meant to be watched the whole thing unless you wanna watch a uh, I don't know Lord of the Rings <laughs> director, oh cut <laughs> director cut level <laughs> of <laughs> uh, fixing a bug in Blender. So you can jump into the different bits of the whole. Um, stream so no not stream but video um, so like from the introduction there is in one hour after in <laughs> it says identify the broad issue nice one hour later oh found the wrong part of the code ten minutes five minutes later realize what exactly the issue is and then I start to build the solution bits and then actually the fixing goes much uh, faster but yeah identifying the issue and found the finding the issue it takes a lot yeah. and it's important because that's uh, one thing I wanted to, to demonstrate is that I've we had a few people saying, hey, uh, can you show how to fix a bug so I can help with the fixing some bugs in Blender? We could, but again, it's not so trivial. The bug that can be fixed in five minutes or can be fixed by someone with no experience, probably an experienced developer can also fix it in half an hour, 20 minutes. Yeah. So it's just to give some perspective. It's still, Blender is a very welcoming project. Uh, everyone can contribute, but don't 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 think that bug fixing can be like this whole unpredictable game. Yes, exactly. So and it's also good. It's like okay, uh, why is my fix my bug not fixed? Well, look at the three and a half hour video. Of course, if you wouldn't be recording it, it would be faster. But still, it takes takes quite a while, and it's not easy for everybody to get into that um, because you need to kind of know all the code a little bit. In advance, at least to know which one. Which, one uh, thing that I, I considered doing this in the past when I was doing mostly Blender development. Yes. Because it also helps you to focus, actually. You know, because you're recording or in a live stream, whatever. So you need to like commit yes. to be doing only that. It's like making non-stop. tutorials. Making tutorials is the best way to be focused because your screen is being captured. So better be good. So it's interesting, actually. It's a 
<laughs> from the development perspective, maybe more developers could try it. I'd love to see other developers doing this. I think Jack Luke posted once a video. Yes, he did. Uh, about that. And anyway, it's just something I did on my time. I had to, I had to fix the bug. I wanted to fix the bug, anyways. And it'd be it's a fun to record the process. So just check it out. Whoever's curious, leave some comments. All right. Speaking of comments, question time. Let's jump into the question time. Uh, it's 37 comments. Wow. Okay, that's a lot. Anyway, so first the comment is that uh, we need this because of LTS. Uh, before even continuing with the comment, like, uh, of course, we, everything would be nice to be have because of LTS, but it's not like a showstopper. Um, things will happen. There's life after the LTS. So what happened to the fracture modifier? It's been a year, still waiting for it. I think we get, this is one of the questions, in the top 10 questions we get every week, Fracture Modifier. The official answer is... It's, uh, we still work with the developer who contributed to the Fracture Modifier. There's a modifier from him, who was, I think was already merged, which planned for 2.90, yeah. 2.90, which is the remesh modifier. Yeah, the remesh yes. modifier, which actually got um, voxel remeshing came from his patch. So is it? And then, yeah, but Pablo Dubarri did like to, to, to be integrated on in his patch. And so after, I mean, it, it's still, it's not that we just cannot prioritize it at the moment. Next question is, uh, thank you for the live streams, Paolo. Any updates on improving retopology? No, that I know. No, there, this, I mean, uh, one thing that uh, Pablo Dubarri is doing at this very moment is to put into paper what's the roadmap on his mind for this whole, for the module, right? Yeah. And I'm, I know Retopology is one of these, at least it was like since a long time ago. So that's why he needed, he needed some fixes for the drawing overlay. So just stay tuned. I think there's, there might be some update yeah. for and, the future. And it's in Paolo's hands there, mainly. So we might see some news. Are there any possible is there is is there any possible oh, to write real time denoiser algorithm for every graphics card? <laughs> That's I mean this is because uh, the the, oh, view, the viewport real time denoiser we have is something that's implemented on the driver of the, on the graphic card of Nvidia via optics. Yes. And there's not yet. Well, I think uh, CPU the Intel one, one is CPU one, so you could, but not for a like a real time. Ah, real time, yes. Yeah, no, but also that was contributed by NVIDIA themselves. And I think I think there was officially announced a open source, like from Kronos, right? Yeah. Open source Vulcan based denoising. But we are not still using Vulcan, so even if that's really proves to be a replacement for the optics implementation, it's still far to be into bladder. Yes. Next question. Hi, Pablo Andalai. Is there any other experimental builds apart from particle nodes? There are experimental builds. Actually, in fact, the modifier nodes um, branch. Ah, uh, no, I, I compiled it for Linux. <laughs> so all Linux users can find the modifier, pan modifier panels UI branch. In the um, Windows, which is the most popular, I guess, there is a functions branch and um, new object types branch, but then um, some of the object types are already there. So no, not many. Um, but yeah, uh, we have the modifier, the modifier spaniel, we have it for, for Linux. Yes, I, I actually the compiled build. it before. The, the builder.blender.org we, we could download. Yeah, we, we could, <laughs> we, could uh, we could compile the, the modifier panel branch here for Windows and Mac, since we well, added so people can test it, but it's still my really work, work in progress. So uh, it's also going to be on Masters rather soon if next week Master is open again. So we might see it in a couple weeks um, time even. I'm just kicking the Windows build bot. To oh, build it. awesome. Thank you. Next uh, question is uh, by Timothy. It's like in the episode with Ian, that is Tuesday this week, I was so happy to hear you say EV motion blur in 2.9. <laughs> So actually, uh, that I wrote it all over my walls in my apartment. Can't go back now. Joking aside, glad to see even motion blur getting pushed up a little more on the priority list and perhaps onto the roadmap. In animation, Eevee is becoming a legitimate force and 
Motion blur is a must. Thank you, Blender Foundation and devs for all the hard work. And your answer got your question got answered uh, because actually a Blender Foundation developer is working on it as you saw previously. So if you want to keep this going, remember that you can help by joining the Blender Development Fund and making that developer's life easier. So of course, uh, the motion blur in EV is equivalent to the vector motion blur elsewhere. So like just the Blender keep internal on check. So like the Blender internal uh, approach. Yeah, I think I'm. Um, you know better than I, but, but I, I think the outline is a bit better than what I'm used to see on yeah. the Blender internal. So maybe I think uh, Clement managed to to up the game a yeah. notch. Are there video games with actual real motion blur in objects, the formation motion blur in video games? I always see it in the camera, which is very... Um... I remember the classic ones, the accumulation buffer, right? Even yeah. the Blender Medium had that, but that's not real. Real motion blur. blur is it? No. Next question. How uh, multi-res refactor going? Any news? How was multi-res refactor going? Actually, that got merged. It got most of it got merged, and now the Pablo Bar is working on the on subdivide. Yeah. It should is it, is there a patch? Is it a seven three seven two? Oh. And that's the one thing that to help importing assets from different software, such as ZBrush, uh, Substance, maybe I don't know. Oh. So that is to with this function functionality, it's going to be easier to. To, to test and to try the the whole Multres pipeline with production uh, friendly production a triple A production assets and whatnot. Awesome! So actually, oh, so he's it's going, going quite well. Yeah, so you can find actually this on uh, developer the blender dot slash d capital d seven three seven two, um, the work in progress by Pablo Barro. So very interesting, and the rest of the Multres actually got uh, merged in master. So you're gonna find it over there. Um, next, uh, actually many questions in one. Any news on new booleans? Not that I know. Any oh, plans uh, Any plans for Quadriflow update? So it could handle hard... no. No, it's a problem because we're again relying on an external library which wasn't built with every single use case we actually have in when people are using Blender, for instance. Yeah. So there's a few shortcomings when it comes to that. Thank you. Next question by Mantas. I'm interested why documentation of Blender is so limited and almost without any visual examples explaining how things work. It would be very helpful if it's because all the learning should be obtained from the Blender cloud. What? No. There's a reason. There's a reason for the first part of the question yeah. that the Blender manual is a reference manual. It's not a comprehensive training content. It's, it's not a how to Blender. The reference manual, like what this does, and we break this rule already a lot. We explain a few uh, workflows, but in theory, maybe even need to make it more self-contained as a reference manual. Yes. So if uh, what it means that, for example, you can right-click and then uh, in a setting or an option, and then you can go to the online uh, manual, which is gonna take you to the section. Oh, actually, I'm in Brazil. Ah, oh, because I have. Whoa, I didn't know that. Uh, because I have the setting to Brazilian Portuguese, it's actually sending you to the manual in, Bra in Portuguese. That's very interesting. You can check on the top left, uh, sorry, bottom left corner. Yes. The language as well. Uh, yeah, exactly. So you can go to English. And that, that's why, that's the main reason, actually. Um, but also, this is a, uh, uh, is a volunteer project, the documentation itself. So you're going to... Mm, yes and no. We do have a Blendify... Uh, working hard well, just, to, to work yeah. through the documentation. But the one person yeah, for no, like no, the I'm whole thing. The whole, blender, the whole Blender can take uh, contributions from, from the community. Exactly. And uh, for example, you can see the work that my buddies, the Chris Pencil uh, team is doing actually. They are and uh, they are actually working on the documentation, at the, especially Matias Mendiola is working on it as they're adding the features. So he is uh, actually his, maybe the, the Grease Pencil section is more uh, detailed, but that's because there is a passionate team behind it that actually goes, make the pictures, and makes everything. So really, it's up to the community. 
mainly. No, none of the Grease Pencil developers is actually getting paid or under the payroll of Blender or like any from anybody from the Grease Pencil team. That is actually a passion project, which is nice to share. Next, um, well, actually, it's uh, quite a long question. Is it because learning should be obtained from the cloud? No, absolutely not. No. Um, if people actually what you find on Blender Cloud is fairly advanced, then uh, it's, if uh, if it was just like a, a money thing, no, you find training on the cloud. We would be making completely um, beginner, like completely beginner stuff, and the uh, cloud is actually more advanced usually. Um, if um, people like to volunteer and contribute documenting and connecting references, how could they join? I can go to, there's a get, uh, get involved. Get I'm involved section on blender.org slash, no, blender.org, there is a the menu, I think on the menu itself on the landing page. Ah, on the landing page of the manual. You can find how to contribute. Am I right? Get involved, yes, exactly. How to contribute to this manual. There, down here. Next um, question says um, by Cobra, have you guys thought about adding a uh, radial basis function solver to Blender? It's a great solution for complex three axis rotations. Oops. No idea what mm, it means. Never seen this before. And watch the whole video. <laughs> so many questions pending. Yes. Um, no, I actually have not seen this before, so I don't know. Uh, maybe one of the. Uh, Developers, if sees if they're looking at this, they maybe hey, they're for example, Severin. And can't you just use uh, quaternions for three axis rotation? Isn't mm. right? Like I thought, solve every single thing in the whole planet. Never seen this actually before. So, um, yeah, maybe uh, actually Severin is on the chat, the animation developer. So if you have seen it, maybe you can answer on the comments. Next question, um, Mal Porte. It says, uh, precision modeling plus some suggestions. Hi, Paolo. Many people would like to use Blender for everyday tasks like 3D printing, design, etc. Our planned new feature for CAD modeling, precision drawing, and enhance the course workflow. This is another top question I get every week. Fracture modifier, CAD stuff, precision modeling. Not to enhance the curve workflow. There's almost no uh, activity there. For CAD modeling, yes. And again, there's been talk to, ex to exhaustion. Snapping is the first thing that comes, and then... And then the add-on uh, for precision modeling is actually being actively developed, and it's built in Blender, so it comes with it, so you don't have to um, download it from anywhere it comes here. Um, but I, I personally haven't used it because it's not my area, but it is being developed, so please give feedback in that. Um, like uh, I like when people ask these questions, I wonder if they are already using the tools available or just asking for asking. So um, please check out the uh, PDT or precision drawing modeling no, tool in uh, Blender. I don't know. I would suggest two tools, wireframe modifier and inset operator. Wireframe modifier, how is actually, in my opinion, those wedges are ugly. <laughs> Um, better both aesthetically and topologically, in particular when adding a subdivision modifier. Um, but the wireframe modifier, this, I, I, this one I didn't get actually. No, I also don't understand if it's like, what, what do you have to do with the, oh. with the subdivision? No and, idea. And the inset operator, I would suggest to add an option to obtain the second topology, especially useful in ArcVis. And another, a different kind of... Um, in setting, I don't know if that's the, the problem. I, it's, it's probably global. Or is it the problem if you do this, you're adding new vertices to the neighbors as well. While for the the first one, it's really local. The changes we're doing, right? Yeah. I don't know with, if there is a... any goals. It should be fine. Just yeah. I don't know if this is even possible with that add-on at the moment, or if it's very custom because making this uh, approach also work in every context or is more like. With a, you you never know. You can never know what kind of mesh your the the user has, right? Like if it's an organic modeling or um, that's an option. It could work, option. but I I don't think it'd be that useful for yeah, depends for the, the other cases. Next, uh, in Next some layout, layout, in some layout configuration, um, the negative and positive axes are indistinguishable. Indistinguishable. Their color is customizable, customizable in some way, maybe via Python. 
What do you mean? The navigation widget, for example. The negative and positive axis. Ah, oh, the value axis. between the red, the bright red and the non-bright red. Is it even different? I get it's not customizable. Uh, it's not customizable, no. But uh, no, actually Blender doesn't have a way to tell apart the um, positive and negative axis. That doesn't, um, does it matter that much? I don't know. Yes. Um, I guess it does, you know, if you're like where you are, like on the left, on the right. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it sounds like a nice little patch for someone to uh, to see. I, I would like to have it as an option, though. I don't know if I like oh. the extra noise, but it sounds fairly simple for people that for a person that doesn't know actually how to do it. But maybe it's a nice feature to develop in a blender. Dive into the code. Oh, sure, like the th at least exposing the thing is very straightforward to do it. Yeah, or just like hard coding it, had like default hard coded. Maybe one episode could be about, okay, let's find the negative value of the this red line and let's make it darker, hard coded to one video. And the next video, okay. let's make okay. it an option. Totally. So you're writing on the things that I don't care. <laughs> I well, put it on my list of things. I, I, I didn't even know the, I thought they have the same color. Yeah, it has the same color. So I'm pretty sure it's not that straightforward, but yeah, I could think about it because it's maybe nobody thought about it. You know, it's because because the whole drawing code for this is not is I mean it's totally doable and even easy to do it, but I don't think it's gonna be the best experience for the viewer to digest that video. Uh, let's let's find out. Let let us know in the so, comments. Yay! Let's <laughs> find out in the comments. Actually, people said that would be good. I would watch it. But you never know. What if it's a three-hour about thing about trying to change the color of a red line? <laughs> it could happen, you know, in development. You never know. Nicola really says, the frag shader for the line can do it. Bam. Done. So Nicola is going to make a bit now. <laughs> Thank you, Nicola, for the um, shout out. Next uh, question. Uh, when can we expect another blog post? I love reading. I also love reading this. Thanks. There is no blog post uh, draft, actually. I check on the code blog. I checked today. Uh, do you know if there is any developer trying to or thinking of writing? I know there's one. We talked about Pablo. The asset man. You want to make a public promise here? No. <laughs> okay. Which do you one know the one it? I'm talking about? Uh, not actually. The yeah. top 10 questions. Ah, top 10 questions. Well, yeah, basically just I, as a, oh, as a blog post. I thought it was a live stream. No, I, it's a I blog post. about live stream, but then Francisco no. gave the idea of making it a live post. Like, it can be both. I think it should be a blog post. So we can just point like this. Fracture modifier, CAD tools, um, motion blur, in EV, and that kind of stuff. All the questions that we get every week, put them in a blog post. Good question. With more details, maybe. More they details, yeah, with links. Read over it. With links to the actual... Um, tasks where people can see the progress of those because whatever we say now is the status as of today but in a blog post you can actually just point people all right so the next one actually has some fun animations it says hello blender developers thanks for all your time and efforts put into blender let me jump into the question right away can we have something similar to eevee which is fast way to get acceptable results to generate some effects like an external link um is this open source too it may be looking at this project blender team can get some ideas for implementing in the future please check tune effects another um this is a particle effect creation tool do you know it so the fx the FX do you know it i just click no no but I just i just visit the link okay which means it's a good uh, reference definitely for the particle nodes project so thanks for the link Okay. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And it seems to be open source. Thing is that it's usually it's not just like a plug and play, but it's uh, very nice uh, for the everything knows, maybe for presets for it. And the way, I mean, if the software is only focused on doing this kind of stuff, then it must be really good at it or maybe clear. So it's a good reference always to see how other softwares that are specialized in that do it. Okay, so we reached the questions that don't have any votes, so I'm going to go to the bottom and ask the ones that were asked first. And it's 6 o'clock here, but um, you okay with time? Well, we can do a few more questions, I guess. Five. Do you say five? 
Mm -hmm. Five good. Five questions. Yes, thank you. Okay, actually, the first question I uh, poked um, Sibren and he actually answered it himself. So thank you, Sibren. It was about um, the um, the an option that that is called disable and keep transform uh, on the constraints. So it's a new setting that was added by Sibren recently in the last couple releases um, to remove, not remove, but basically like disable the um, constraint temporarily before you have to like move it to zero and then add a keyframe and it wasn't even that good in doing that so he added an option and here this question is answer about improvements in the IK constraint the other question actually also answered by Jeroen thank you Jeroen Bakker developer working on um, viewport compositor workbench EV so the question was uh, just Animation, one... playback performance. Oh, okay. So actually there has been some improvement and you don't thank you for <laughs> replying. We don't have to do this anymore. We can just fuck developers. So uh, next question, tester, are you looking for testers? I'm not talking about using Blender as an artist and bar reporting, but as a scripting thoroughly testing a, particle, a particular change from a daily build, for example. Yes, it's unsaid and it's true. We do always look for testers. The more, the merrier. Yeah. So join the team. Pablo, which microphone do you use for your streams? Oh, where is that? Oh, which it's microphone? A, yeah. I use an AT, it's one of the most popular for uh, for podcasting. It's an uh, AT2020 and um, I use the XLR, um, like Audio Technica 2020. Uh, I use an SLR right now so you need to connect it to something that can amplify it so in this case a mixer the mixer is a yamaha mg 10 xu uh, it's also very popular amongst uh, uh, like streaming because it's fairly small you can connect up to four um like microphones directly but also have a bunch of options and you have effects that you can finally you can add to whatever you're doing you're, you're doing you're doing you're doing and an echo 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 or some very recent one yeah actually you can hear sorry but <laughs> you have some effects but i never use those actually uh yeah. but before that actually i had the same uh, microphone which is the at 2020 usb which i loved i love the usb version i still have it actually i just um uh, on Linux, there is no unless you compile your own jack and do all kinds of weird things with the audio interface. Um, it's very hard to like tune the audio for me at least. It's very hard for me to tune the the, the effects in the uh, in the microphone with an equalizer. So on Windows, you wouldn't have any issue. There is even a plugin for OBS, the streaming app that I use, that you can equalize the microphone from there. But on Linux. No. Unfortunate, though. Yeah, that was one of the questions. On it was one community. of the questions, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it reminds me, actually, I was using uh, OBS, well, I'm using OBS every day now, but I was remind me that it's an open source software and it's multi-platform, but some features are only Windows, some are some Linux. Oh. And that is, it makes me think that um, Blender every feature that gets added it's usually pushed to be the same everywhere windows mac or linux and that is a very nice thing of blender and i often like not uh, maybe notice you don't notice until you miss it for example in this case in the case of obs i love it but i have to see on their check log is on the release log is like nice feature ah it's only windows um funny because i was using it yesterday Maybe I should have used the Windows version. <laughs> uh, well, if you have Windows, you have more options for... Um, like the Linux browser is a plugin. It's actually a browser to and, and that you need a, a plugin for it on Linux, which is fine. But uh, the equalizer, equalizer, for example, is uh, a plugin that is also only on Windows. Anyway, we ended up talking about other open source software. So question number four. Three, actually. Hi, Pablo. Hi, Dalai. Hi, Blender Development Team. You're awesome. No, Last time on... In dive into the code stream, I learned so much new. That's oh, nice. nice. Thank you for watching. The question: Why doesn't Blender have displace modifier for curves? It's easy. <laughs> Just add a a flag, <laughs> and it will perfectly displace curves along X Y Z. <laughs> I know the answer. Everything notes. Uh, so I guess um, I don't know about this, but, but to uh, be fair. Um, Patch ideally we'd like to 
have every single modifier that works for mesh to also work for curve objects. Ah. There's no, there's a reason why it's not this way, but with the way things happen internally, there's no real reason because internally the curves, they get converted to mesh every now and then. If not every single modifier. So, so thank you. But also, like, if it was proposed as a patch, would it be accepted or would it be like, hey, can you also make it for meshes? No, if, 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 because we, were, we have this for... I'm assuming we have this modifier already for mesh, right? Yes, which we do. But it doesn't work for curves. Yes. So, yeah, it will be accepted. We well, yeah, accept that. Awesome, okay. So, next question is uh, Final Flasher. Paolo, can we expect faster compositor anytime soon or any updates? Mm, <clears throat> not anytime soon. No. It's uh no. Defined it soon. Be full with uh, animation playback. <laughs> um yeah. So it's the same developer like it, like just to give an idea, the developers that could work on this, for example, because work on other areas, uh, for example, Faster Compositor, maybe it's uh, Jeroen Bakker, he worked on the Compositor before, but now he's working on Faster uh, Playback, he, before he worked on the Workbench, before he worked on uh, EV stuff, EV Passes, is by the same developer, so imagine, same developer working on all those areas, not everything can be tackled at once, I don't know, like Clement, the EV developer, could work on some kind of real-time compositor in the viewport but he's now working on motion blur <laughs> so it's like uh it's just so many things to tackle that we don't have enough developers and the last question hey pablo blender is awesome i was using 3ds max for 10 plus years and it's nothing but a blessing to have made the switch to blender that's very nice to hear Thanks to all the team's great work. My question, I would like to see an uh, Adobe Illustrator file or similar vector graphics, like SVG, as an image texture to benefit from its infinite scalability. Is that possible somehow? Not that I know. Yeah, SVG yeah. texture. No, what like a vector. Image? We can import it, right? Yes. But not, 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 not as an image Not texture. as a texture, no, you can't. So procedural textures for the win. But we can uh, import it and then convert to grease pencil and then... then <laughs> <not. laughs> we can't right now, but it would be possible in the future. All right, with that question, I think we reached the end of the show. It's been over an hour, I believe. I hope... Uh, yeah, it's one hour too. Wow. When is the day I'm going to make it exactly an hour? Not ever. The day we start exactly at, on time. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Burn. <laughs> okay, done. I'm I'm done for today. I'm not even gonna listen to you now. Okay, it's okay. Uh, you know, it's hard. It's hard. Even though I start every day at the same time, there's always things going on. Today you jump in like literally. It's dead people. It was three minutes to five, and you said, "Hey, I'm gonna join," and then we join. Otherwise, I will be all by myself. Thank you for joining the live. It's been so nice. It makes it so much easier. To go uh, through this no, no problem i uh, i was in the elevator when you were saying hey <laughs> seriously sure we really can do it for bees okay like just send me the link just you were in the elevator <laughs> wow okay so <laughs> you see guys this is how it happens thank you um for joining this quarantine time quarantine content blender today 98 is today it's uh what happens in 100 what do we do such a pity that we do it here but maybe i don't know think of ideas let me know how, how far is it in the future two next weeks week already, no? <laughs> two weeks no next week is 99 the week after is um so the 24th of april is gonna be 100. i have an idea for it for, for maybe it's not big enough for 100 but we could do the other way around you could be interviewed <laughs> huh yeah really so yeah, why not? I mean, you're always interviewing people, asking about, and they have such a very interesting Blender-related life and related work behind their career. <laughs> Is it weird? People would love to hear. Is it what weird? do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> Is it weird that I actually I'm getting nervous of that, like by being interviewed? <laughs> that would make for a perfect uh, special episode. 
Like it's so weird, how yeah. this whole thing started, how your life on like video making, your I don't know, there's so many things to get to explore. I'm gonna cry in that live stream. <laughs> 100 episodes, and I've done a hun over 100 in Spanish, so it's over 200 live streams plus the everyday. So yeah, it has changed my life. But no spoilers. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Maybe we'll end up today in 80, uh, 100. Let me know in the comments below, please. If you like this idea or if you just think that it's silly um I, I mean of course it would be nice to have like all developers in one chat or like a ton you know something big but um maybe we can yeah maybe that's a good uh thing we can do now and then when once we are back at the studio in normal life maybe we can do that all right thank you for the idea the light thank you for dropping by thank you everybody in the comments for the very nice uh, uplifting comments all the hearts emojis and the, the nice support thank you really it's been a great amazing week we had captain zero ian Hubert, the lie showing diving to the code we have a whole team blender studio team talking about their latest project which uh it, it um yes yeah, so there was not so many people um, live as in other live streams but i think that episode is gold so if you haven't seen it yet go watch it because you get a really a, a glimpse of working with a team and how to split the different tasks from modeling animation rigging shading and uh, just finishing the project so please check it out give it a thumbs up to this video so maybe more people can watch it people are loving the idea of you being interviewed Pablo. yes oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> i'm nervous all right okay <clears throat> All right, where to buy the t-shirt? I think this t-shirt is not available, unfortunately, it's anymore. Not, I, mean, I told already. Ah, you said? It's uh, it's on store.blender.org. You're going to find some t-shirts, but some of them are like very, uh, just, you know, for... Well, they're made by you. This is pretty nice. I like that one. Then there is the other ones with the Blender logo, which are not super fun. This is the best one so far. I think the, the, the Noodle Monster or the... 8 euro for the caminante that's very affordable are we are they trying to get rid of it I, sh I, sh I think i'm gonna buy it myself a couple i don't think i have it actually 8 euro is your moment i mean this is not an advertisement really it's just like it's just very cheap for it like i don't Usually know i don't wear t-shirts with this kind of neck so much ah. i like a bit more loose Oh, well, you can uh, rip it off, but uh, in, uh, yeah, like H&M would be five euro for a t-shirt and this is 850, so not too bad. Anyway, and much better quality. Anyway, let, let's uh, go back to what we were saying, which is goodbye, because next week, same place, same time, we're going to find another uh, um, amazing week. What's the agenda? What's the lineup? Is it already set on stone for next week? It's a secret. I can't oh, even talk okay. about it. Yeah. They tell me after the streaming. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. I had a great time. Watch out for your headphones in five, four, three, two, one. Bye -bye. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, community. Ciao, the lie. You're still live, by the way. It's I know. I'm closing you. Go to full screen for a very last goodbye. Until next week, if everything was okay. Enjoy. Play. Blend. Wash your hands, stay home, stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Nice.